This video will show how to create the following two small Rube programs. First, creating a new Rube file in an empty directory, implementing it with a trivial program, printing the classical phrase Hello World to the screen. Then the Hello World program will be replaced with another program, which receives input arguments from the command line and also receives keyboard input from the user. This video is part of at least one playlist showing how to do the above with different programming languages. There should be a link to that playlist in the description below. Prerequisites. You, the viewer of this video, are assumed to have some skills in at least some programming language. I will not explain basic concepts such as what is a variable or what is an array or what is a for loop. Even if you have never written source code with Rube, you are assumed to be able to understand, for example, what this Rube code below does. In this video, I am using Windows 10, and I start by showing which version of Rube I have installed. The version of Rube is 2.7.3. The Windows command dir shows that I am starting from an empty directory. Now I create a new directory called Ruby with the Windows command MD. Then I navigate into the new directory with CD Ruby. Then I start Visual Studio Code by typing code and a dot, which is the path to the current directory. When Visual Studio Code has started, I create a new Ruby file, arguments underscore inputs dot RB in the new Ruby directory. When you are creating a Ruby script, you do not need to put the code in a class with the main method, which is needed in some other programming languages. In other words, you can write code in the file directly at a file global level outside of any method in a class. I will implement the initial trivial Ruby script by calling the method puts to print hello world on the screen. The method puts belongs to the kernel class, but you can call it as if it would be a global function. Then I show with the Windows command there that the Ruby file has been created in the directory Ruby. The Ruby script can now be executed by typing Ruby and then the file name. When the script is executed, hello world is shown on the screen just as expected. Now I will replace the initial hello world implementation with the program that will receive and print arguments from the command line. The program will also ask the user to enter a name and will then print to the screen the name that the user typed. For this purpose, I have prepared some pseudocode that I will paste into the program, but in comments because of course it would not be possible to execute. Then I will modify the code by changing it to Ruby code that can be executed. Now I am showing how the program arguments will be provided to the program when it is executed. The arguments will be added after Ruby and then the name of the Ruby file, and then a space between each argument. So here I am showing three arguments for the program. Any program arguments are available in an array named argv. You can iterate that array with the method each with the code block and an associated argument, which I give the name arg. Inside the loop, program arguments are printed to the screen by calling the method puts. There, in the loop, I am creating the string, the so-called string interpolation, with the number sign before the variable name in curly braces. The question, what is your name, is printed with a method print instead of puts, because I want the input prompt to appear on the same line. In other words, I do not want to print a line break at the end, which would be done if you instead use the method puts. I will read from the keyboard by using the method stdin.gets. stdin means standard input. Then I am printing the name in the variable name with the method print and the text hello as prefix. And again, use this string interpolation with the number sign before the variable name in curly braces. 
when I execute the script, you can see that it works almost as expected, except that the line break too much is printed. The reason is that apparently a line break is included at the end of the name by the method stdame.gets. This problem can be fixed by removing so-called white space, for example, the line breaks from the end of the string. The method gets returns a string that has a method strip that removes white space at both the beginning and the end of the string. Here I am instead using the method rstrip that removes any white space only from the end of the string. If you just want to remove white space from the beginning of the string, you can use lstrip instead. While strip corresponds to using both lstrip and rstrip. The prefixes L and R in L strip and R strip stands for left and right. When I now execute the script again, you can see that it works exactly as expected. Now, no additional line break is printed at the end, thanks to the use of the R strip method.